Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC from the new shop. It is Monday afternoon, uh, two days before this Wednesday widget gets published. Normally we pre-record these things a bit in advance, but we are good to go from the point of being, you know, at least moved in. Lots of unpacking and organizing to do. I'll talk about that later in this video. Um, the theme of today's video is where we work. So we're going to do two things. We're going to take a look at a Fusion 360 part that a customer sent in and said, hey, help me with the work coordinate systems and origin points. We'll take a look at how we can do that. And then we'll do a uh, quick shop tour and talk about where we are and what's left to do and what, where we're uh, getting settled in with. So here's the part the customer sent in. And this is a great example of a part where it's, you might say, darn it, where is the best way to put the work offset origin? I can't figure out a good spot. So what I like to do is pick two faces that you trust. And in, that ex in this example, I would like to use this outside face and this inside part right here. So what we're gonna do is create, and then the, the top here. So we'll create a sort of imaginary point that is the intersection of those two planes. How do we do that? Really simple. Go to line, or for you, if you don't have that at the top line, you can you know, hover that up tool arrow to add anything to your toolbar up here. So line. You got to pick your face, so nice and easy, you want to hover over this face, click on that, hold down control and the middle mouse wheel or button, and that lets us drag this part around so we can see it better. And if you look, we're still on the line tool, it'll just, it'll snap to this existing line, and we can just go all the way left. If you look down at the bottom, you can see it's 178.9 degrees, just hit tab and type in 180, and that'll force that line to be perfectly parallel or collinear, I guess, with uh, the face that we're using. So click OK, or click, and then click Select to get off that line tool. Choose line again, and we'll pick, scroll, zoom in here, and we'll pick this line. And same thing, uh, we see we're at 90, which is fine, and click Enter, hit Enter. And now we've got these two lines. We can do a sketch point and just zoom in a little makes it easier and you can see it snaps to and we create a point right there. In a second we'll go in and show how to create the coordinate system in CAM. Uh, what you should also do to be good on your CAD etiquette is select this line, hold down control and select that line and choose construction so that those are viewed as construction lines and not actual you know, machine geometry. So if you see that's the theoretical intersection point of that face and that face right there. Perfect. Now there's an even better way to do it. Let's take a look. So thanks to Curtis at Autodesk for showing me this trick. Super easy though. Construct axis through two planes. Use our middle mouse button to scroll the part around or rotate it around. Choose that face. I'll zoom out again, middle mouse wheel. Now for some reason I've got like this film layer that's keeping me from selecting internal geometry from this angle. But if we just roll the part over, again, middle mouse wheel clicking down, I can now hover over and select that face. Click OK, and you see, boom, we've got an axis right through that perfect theoretical point. So hop into CAM, and we'll do a setup for a new job. And I will just go from stock box point to selected point. And if we just hover over that point, boom, perfect. You can see our X axis is in line with this, our Y axis is in line with there, and our Z axis is right on top of that point right there. Just that easy. So that's a really powerful thing because you're going to find with fixtures or complicated parts or things you're doing second or third operations on, you don't always have that perfect corner uh, to start with. So being able to comfortably manage and set up work coordinate systems is, is really important. So with that, let's take a look at the new shop. So as a quick recap, um, this all sort of went down on Friday. The Let's see here, oh my gosh, this is crazy. The fourth, I guess, and uh, thought about it, had some conversations over the weekend, uh, the long, I guess that was the holiday weekend, right? And Tuesday morning, the eighth, I came and toured this space I'm in right here, uh, struck a deal to, to get in, to get in quickly. The landlord, appreciate his help, actually moved some stuff out that they had here. And we filmed one last little bit at the shop on Wednesday, which should be next week's Wednesday widget, I think. And then 
So I started taking stuff down Wednesday afternoon, like electric, you know, equipment, power, or air compressor lines. And then Thursday, I really started moving stuff. And what I did, I had one guy helping me because Friday I took off from any of this. But then Saturday morning, we had four guys. And actually, let me take the time now to say thank you to Jared P., Jared D., uh, Anthony, Jeremy, Casey, Nolan, Liam, and Chase. You guys were, I mean, seriously, I couldn't have done it without you. And it was raining and it was cold, which it was, it's been hot and dry for the last two months, but hey, it is what it is. But Saturday morning at 8 a.m., they were all there. A lot of the guys brought big trucks or trailers, and I wanted Saturday morning to be able to start loading machines. So Thursday, uh, one of the guys and I, basically got machines over toward the door and got everything sort of ready. And that forces you to go through the process of, is this machine ready to transport? Um, we weren't going very far, you know, 15 miles and we could take it slow. I didn't plan on it raining, but uh, we were very safe. But I will tell you, we did not rig stuff up. Sorry, not rigging. Rigging we were safe with in terms of strapping it down. But like the Tormach, I left the computer on there, the keyboard on the table, the mouse was it was right on there on the table and we just wrapped stuff up or make sure it was secure. Uh, but I didn't disconnect anything more than I had to and put the spindle down on a piece of four by four, moved the table to the front right that helps really balance the machine. On the lathe, I moved the turret down and to the right and it balanced perfectly. It was super easy. The only thing we even had close to a, I don't know if you call it a hard time, but that Bridgeport weighs a lot. It weighs a lot more than anything else that we've got. And all that mattered was when we were unloading it here with the skid steer, hydraulics were powerful enough, but you had to be real careful not to tip it and not be jerky. And, and it was simple. I mean, we just got it right up there close, put it on a pallet jack, wheeled it across and brought the skid steer in and lift it off and then set it back down. Totally fine. Never had the Bridgeport high off the ground so that even if it had rolled forward, you would have only gone four to six inches. Um, it was a pain in the butt. I'm, it's not, I'm like still processing everything and I wouldn't say I'm like happy about it, but on the flip side, gotta look forward and this is awesome. It's great to be uh, in a new shop. I still feel like there's a lot of work left to do unpacking, but even this morning, it's been just me and I've gotten a ton done. So we'll go take a walk here. Uh, meeting the electrician tomorrow. <laughs> Fun fact about three phase, which I knew is that you don't really have 240. And I knew you had 208 between two legs, which a lot of equipment is okay, like I think the welder and the air compressor. Tormox aren't supposed to run on 208. Their rating is 230 to 250. There's a thread I found online though, and you can, I guess, run them under voltage, but what ends up happening with three phase is because your 208 is between two hots and not between that to ground, and this is all now over my head, you actually have to change something in the controller. Absolutely not worth doing. So I've got uh, a buck booster thing coming, which I knock on wood from Tormach should do the trick. And we'll have that up, back up and running and we'll be good to go. So on we go. So let's take a look around. Okay, we'll start over by the door so you can see where I'm walking to it right now. It's funny, one of the things I've really kind of learned is how this room films. There's more echo. That'll go away a little bit as we move in. And obviously the lighting is, is very different, but the bright walls, uh, the floor is, are great. The floor is great, except it is quickly very slippery of any sort of oil. Um, all that stuff is basically getting packed up and put into, um, back into storage or, or taken out. So that'll be a nice way to clean up. We're gonna leave the Lista right here. We're gonna move that vent hood uh, over to there, which will be great. Only big thing I lost was the, that welding table. So we'll have to buy or make one. Um, very much TBD on the little details of the layout, but what I'm thinking is I'm actually going on vacation here and Jared is going to make us a rack for that raw material against that wall. So I have the raw material there. Uh, you know, I was thinking, do you want it so that you can unload it straight from the roll-up door, but we don't, we don't deal with that much. And so we're going to have a little row of machines like right here. The saw can live right near the raw material and you can still get it in and out through the pedestrian door, no problem. Uh, welding table will probably go here. A lot of these machines can either be easily moved or they're on wheels. Uh, again, toolboxes, I'm not 100% sure. I actually think I want to rotate the mill uh, 
so that the door, so that we would be looking at it square on right now. I think it has a, a better presence. And you know, the Tormach is kind of my, my pride and joy. So we'll, we'll rotate that around and move that red toolbox. Bridgeport will most likely live there. And for now, the Emco will live there. Some folks mentioned getting rid of them. And you know, I'll be honest, it's not a crazy thought. Um, and I don't want to be clingy, but I will tell you, we do use the bridge port as either for longer travel or as a glorified drill press. Um, and I don't want to get rid of it. Certainly not right now. And the lathe, same thing. I mean, I, I use it even less, but boy, when you need a manual lathe or a bigger lathe or a longer lathe, you need it. And I would just, if I got rid of it, I would still want to get something, which means I'm just going to go buy a smaller lathe. And that doesn't make any sense. Um, upstairs for everybody that asked is sort of like four and a half five foot storage which will be okay but you know i'm not a huge fan of going up and down stairs a lot so i'm not really valuing it too much at least at the second and uh compressor there you know from what i've learned reading about screw compressors is they're not always great unless they're always always on so maybe that's not a good idea i do want something that'll help with noise so i am re researching the sound boxes or mufflers there's an air dryer there that we've never hooked up that I bought at auction. And then the goal is to try to keep the, the door open, the door area here relatively open. I think I'm going to have to buy a forklift because I can't rely on the landlord's skid steer. And we do get you know, freight deliveries enough where I, I need to have something, um, which, is, which is fine because look, looking forward to the next five or 10 years, we're going to need a forklift. And I'm hoping it could live uh, where that jet is and kind of come in right here along uh, to the side of the stairs and that's it um, i've got a i'm going to try to store less thick plate and so we've got a bunch of stuff that we can actually cut up into parts um, it's on a pallet jack now so we can at least wheel it around and i don't know i guess that's it uh, i'm gonna office out of here um, obviously much better ways i can make use of this space but again folks i mean we literally moved the last um, thing in at like two o'clock yesterday it was a beautiful day, so we all kind of wanted to go hang out with our families. So we called it an earlier day. Hey, hey it was a Sunday. And I came in this morning, and I've just been doing lots of, of little stuff. Where's, where'd Judd go? Oh, Judd's hiding. He's not sure what to think of the new space just yet. It's okay, bud. It's okay. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, folks. You know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, but on the flip side, look, you know, nobody likes hanging out with anybody who complains or, or feel sorry for themselves. And I learned some lessons, but more importantly, looking forward. One of my uh, guy who I always looked up to, Steve, back in Connecticut, said, you know, there's a reason why the windshield's bigger than the rear view mirror. And I think we're going to outgrow this space. I know we're going to outgrow this space. It stinks to think about moving yet again, but uh, we're going to get a lot of good work done here. We're going to get some videos done and uh, grow this business and, and move onward with it. So I appreciate your support, folks. Uh, I'm off. I'm I've got a couple of Wednesday widgets in the bag that hopefully will get published while I'm gone. But uh, either way, folks, take care. See you soon.